Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we are going to be creating a particle system with the new donut emission shape from Unity version 2017.1. Now if you haven't already downloaded and installed this new version then I strongly suggest that you go ahead and download it because it is awesome. Now let's take a quick look at what we are actually going to be creating in this video. So as you can see we've got a simple particle system at the center that is just rapidly producing these particles and sending them out into the world with gravity being applied and and some collisions occurring with a floor. Now, I have actually wanted to create this particle system for quite a while, and I was inspired by a Slow Mo Guys video here on YouTube where they set some wire wool on fire and spin it around, sending sparks flying all through the air. I'm not sure if I can show a clip from their video here, so I will link to it in the description below. Definitely check out that video though, because it is really, really cool. Okay, now let's go ahead and create this particle system. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is save my current scene. I'm going to do a file create a new scene here and let's go ahead and actually save it so I'm going to go ahead and just command s on Mac and I'm going to save this to my scenes folder that I already have created and I'm just going to call this donut ps for particle system and go ahead and save now as you can see we have it showing up here now the next thing that I actually want to do is create a plane in my hierarchy so to do that we are just going to right click 3d object plane and let's just zero out the position of our plane and we are going to set the X to a scale of 5 and the Z to a scale of 5 as well now if we look at our main camera it looks like it's pretty close to the plane here so let's go ahead and actually move this up a little bit and we can actually hide our directional light as well we won't be really needing it for this scene but we may add it in a little bit later just in case we do actually end up needing it now for the rest of the initial setup I'm going to click on my main camera and I'm gonna set the background to black just like that and I'm, and I'm also gonna to go to my lighting tab and change the skybox material to none because we don't really need one here now if I go into my game view we can see that our plane is showing up here which is fine we are gonna hide that a little bit later so now let's go ahead and actually add our particle system and to do that we can actually now go up to game object effects particle system and that is actually a new feature of unity 2017.1 but as you can see the positioning of this particle system is a little bit off so let's go ahead and actually go back to our inspector and zero out the position here and for the Y I'm just gonna set it to a value of 2 let's go to our game scene uh, let's go with a value of 5 uh, might have been a little high try 4 okay that's pretty good I just sort of want it centered based on the height of our camera now I do want to actually point out that I will be using some of unity standard assets for the creation of this particle system so if you haven't pulled that in already you should go ahead and do that now because we're going to be using some of their prefabs just as our renderers now let's go ahead and set up some of the initial values for our particle system okay so we're gonna start in our basic particle system module here we're gonna leave our duration to a value of five we're gonna leave looping checked we don't want to start delay. Our start lifetime can also be five. We are going to up our start speed to a value of 10. Whoops, not 510, 10. And we're going to change our start size to a value of 0.4. We do want to add a gravity modifier here. So if I click in gravity modifier, I'm just going to enter a value of one. So as we can see, our particles are now being launched in an upwards direction and then falling downwards after that. I can also change my simulation space to world here. I can actually leave all of the rest of these values to the defaults because we don't really need to change those those for this particle system. Now let's go ahead and actually toggle down our particle system module and we're gonna open up the emission module here and all we have to do in the emission module is increase our rate over time now I want a lot of particles actually being spawned into my scene so I'm just gonna up it to 200 so as we can see now that's a lot of particles that are actually being instantiated and we're not really killing them over time so we're gonna have a lot of them well we are killing them over time but it's taking a while for them to actually be killed so as you can see we're getting a lot of particles in our scene this kind of looks like a little fountain so that's pretty cool too now we can actually toggle down our emission module and go to the shape module now right now we're actually using the cone shape so I'm going to change that to donut and as you can see the donut shape is kind of uh, right now it's instantiating fairly crazily um, you know it looks really really random right now and actually our rotation is a little bit off because I want my donut basically facing us so let's actually remove the X rotation here so we're getting a shape like that we're gonna change our radius to like one point uh, let's go with four seven we're gonna up our radius to point three and now if we look at 
in our arc right now we have a value of 360 which is what we actually want but we, we do want to change our mode so right now it's set to random which is what we can basically see here basically this is just randomly instantiating the particles so we want to change this from random to loop and now what this will do is it will just sort of go around the donut and instantiate particles now what we actually want to do here is actually change our speed so let's go ahead and set our speed to a value of like 2.7. So now we can see that they are spawning very quickly now. It's rapidly spinning and moving around. And instead of actually changing the rotation here, we can actually go negative 90, set it back to that. And we're going to go to our rotation in the shape module and set this to a rotation of 90 here. We also want to spherize the direction that we're instantiating our particles. We don't want to really randomize the direction or the position, but we do want to spherize the direction. So as you can see, when we start increasing this, we start getting this effect where the particles are actually being instantiated based on like the spherized direction. So I'm just going to up this all the way to one. So we have them all instantiating around our loop. Okay. And that's all that we have to set up for the shape module. So let's go ahead and toggle this down. The next module we're gonna take a look at is going to be our color by speed module. So let's just go ahead and check that. Right now we can see that it's just got um, a value of white all the way across which is not really what we want. So the first thing we're actually gonna do is change our speed range. As you can see now, it's from a range of zero to one, but our particles are actually moving at a speed of 10 initially. So we're gonna go with a value of 10 and go into our color range here. And now, as you can actually see, I've already got a preset set up, but I'm gonna walk you through the process of setting up the gradient yourself. We do want the white to the left because we are basing that on our zero, zero speed. So when the particle slows down, it moves slowly towards this white color. But as the particle is moving more quickly, we want to be using a color over here. Now you can use whatever color you want, but I'm going to be using a yellow. So I can actually click on this tag down here, click on the color, and now we can actually set up a color value. And the value that, or the hex color that we're going to be using here is going to be an FF E A 40. Okay, cool. Now, as we can see, our particles are changing color based on the speed. So as they move up, they slow down and change to a white. But if we go down, we can see that the gravity modifier is increasing the speed as they fall downwards. So that's all we actually need to do in our speed module. So color by speed module. So let's go ahead and toggle that down. Now we actually want to change the size over lifetime as well. So let's go ahead and click on that and increase it. And as you can see, that immediately changes the size of our particles because initially we were using the size up at the top, but now we're actually going to be modifying the size like this. So we're not going to be using separate axes here, but you could if you wanted to. I'm actually just going to do a basically a global scale change for these particles. So let's go ahead and click on our size curve here. I can actually increase this. And right now, as you can see, it's actually increasing over time and we want the opposite. We want it decreasing over time. And one thing that we can easily do is just click on one of our examples here. And instead of scaling down to a value of zero, I'm actually going to scale down to a value of like 0 0.02, pretty close to it. So like somewhere right in there. And I'm actually going to turn this curve into a little bit of a Bezier curve here. And I'm also going to do that here. Just increase it a little bit. Make sure we don't go past the value of one. So just sort of a curve like that. That may not be exactly what I had in the previous one, but this should do fine for our demonstration. Okay, and that's actually all we have to do in the size over lifetime module as well. So we can just toggle that down. Now we're gonna move on to our collision module. So let's go ahead and actually check that and toggle it down. And as you can see, we've got a type of planes here, or you could use world. And for our planes, currently we have no transform. So we can just easily select this and it's gonna pull up a scene hierarchy and we can just select the plane that we had earlier. Now we do have several options that we can set up here. So as we can see, it is actually colliding with our plane and bouncing quite heavily. You know, the particles are hitting the plane and then bouncing away, which is not really the behavior that we want. So what we can do is actually change our bounce value to a value of 0.1 instead of one so that we still get some bounce. So as you can see, they do sort of bounce now, but not a whole lot, which is kind of what we want. And so the particles are actually being moved away after they are spawned as well. And again, that's all we really need for this collision module. You know, I was really surprised at how easy this particle system was to actually implement. So let's go ahead and toggle the collision module. And now we're actually going to move on to the trails module. And this is going to look pretty ugly when we first set it up, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and actually check the trails module. And initially when we set this up, you're going to see it's going to, it's going to be really ugly. Yeah. So here we go. We don't have a trails material yet. So we've got a really, really ugly looking particle system 
system right now, but we are going to fix that. So let's go ahead and toggle this down. And we actually have to change a couple of values here because the trails right now, they're, the lifetime is too long. I don't want them following that far and we definitely don't want that color. So we're gonna change the ratio down to 0.5. And as you can see now, some of our particles are not getting a trail, which is exactly what we want. We don't want all of them gener generating trails. We actually wanna reduce our lifetime as well. And I'm gonna reduce the lifetime down to 0.05. Okay, and now as we can see, the trails are just sort of following the particles over time. And this looks a little bit better. Again, it's uh, not that pretty because of the material currently there. Now, another thing that we can actually change here is our texture mode. So we have four texture modes. We have a stretch, tile, distribute per segment, or repeat per segment. I'm actually gonna use distribute per segment here. If we look at the rest of the options, we can leave world space unchecked. We definitely want it to die with the particles. We do want the size to affect the width. We don't want the size to affect the lifetime. We do want it to inherit the particle color. We, so we don't have to do the color over lifetime for these. We do have to change the width over trail. So right now we have a value of one, but I'm gonna change this down to a value of 0 0.06. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Um, kind of uh, LSU colors, you know, purple and gold. Um, but, we, but again, we don't really want the purple but that does look kind of cool. Okay, and that's actually all we have to do for our trails module, so we can go ahead and toggle this down as well. Now for the final module here, we're gonna be working within the render module, so let's go ahead and toggle that up. And right now our render mode is set to billboard, which should be fine. Our normal direction is value of one, which is again pretty good. And our material, we're actually gonna change this to the particle glow. So let's go ahead and click on the target icon and let's look for particle glow, there it is. So let's go ahead and change that. Okay, so we don't see a big difference there but we will see a difference once we change our trail material. So let's go ahead and click on our target and we're gonna change this to the particle spark. Here it is. Okay, so that's already looking better. We can actually leave our sort mode to none, our max particle size, min particle size is fine. So we don't have to do anything else with this renderer. So now if we actually go back out to our scene, we can actually hide our plane. And if we click on the particle again, we can see that the collisions are still occurring. So let's go ahead and take a look in our game mode. And so as we can see, this is actually pretty close to the particle system that we created. So this was very simple simple, really quick, and honestly, I'm really liking this new shape that they've added. But we can make this even better, right? So right now, it's sort of uh, bland. I mean, it's, it's cool, but it could definitely be cooler. So one thing that we can actually do is if we go back to our scene mode, we can add in some post-processing effects. And Darren is actually going to be releasing a video later on this week that is going to cover the post-processing effects in greater depth. But for right now, I do just wanna go ahead and add something to this project. So let's go to our main camera. And as you can see, we don't actually have any post-processing effects added to this camera yet. So we can go ahead and just do an add component. And you do have to actually get the post-processing stack off of the asset store as well. So if you haven't done that, you'll need to go out there and get that. It is free just search for post processing stack and it should be the one available from unity that is free so let's go ahead and actually search for post processing behavior and as you can see right now we've got a profile it says none and I do actually have one already created but we're not going to use that one I'm actually gonna go to my post processing folder here and as you can see I've got one already created but I'm just gonna create a new one for this so we're gonna create a post processing profile and I'm just gonna call this my donut PS and let's go ahead and actually add it to our camera so I can just click look at my assets and find it there. We can actually go ahead and play the game. So this shows everything that's going on and now we can actually play with the settings. So I'm gonna add a bloom. So as you can see, when I add that bloom, we are getting sort of this uh, glare on these particles as they collide with the ground and change color pretty rapidly. But I can actually increase the intensity here. Looks pretty good. We could play with this a little bit more, but again, this is just a quick demonstration. Another thing that we can actually do is change the color grading for this. So if I check on this, we can play with a lot of these values for black in, white in, black out, white out, or some of the other channel mixers for the color. So of course we can play with the green, drop that down, play with the blue, drop that down as well, or increase it. And this really just gives us a ton of capability to manipulate the appearance of this particle system. Now we could actually up our black in, take out our white out a little bit more. And if we actually change to our green now, we can manipulate the green directly. Right now it's a value of one, so I could drop that down. And now we're getting sort of a really vibrant, like pink and purple and blue. Of course, I can drop that down as well. And now we're getting a very, very red particle system because red was, is the only value set to one here. Of course, we could drop this down as well. And this is going to give us, you know, a purple and blue 
particle system. So you can really play with this to your heart's content. But let's go ahead and actually stop that. And the other thing that's really cool is that these changes actually are actually maintained between play mode and edit mode. Okay, coders, that is actually going to do it for this video. We are going to be releasing several more videos throughout this week covering the new features in 2017.1. So be sure to check out those videos and I look forward to seeing you coders in the upcoming videos as well. Okay, coders, I hope that you enjoyed that video. We are constantly adding new videos here on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It allows us to continue making great content for you coders. And if you are feeling extremely generous, please check out our Patreon account. Here are a few of our other tutorials just in case you want to keep on learning. If you become a patron of Renaissance Coders, you can get access to our source code and our project files as well. Okay, coders, that's going to do it for this video. As always, thanks for watching.